Before we move away from the Electron, I just had a follow-up regarding five launches on the Q2 presentation that were previously unannounced. One of those being the Haste launch and the other four being the Confidential Constellation customer. What's the expected time frame for these five launches, like a year even? Uh, well, it really, it, it, each of them are, are different. So, you know, typically the haste launches have a pretty long lead on them um, because there's a, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that goes into into one of those those launches. Um, and and as I, as I mentioned, the the kind of the, the typical customer is used to 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 operating at a different cadence than 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 we are. Um, or they have been used to, um, and then the the four four commercial launches, like any in any kind of multi launch deal, they're spread over uh, a period of time. Um, you know, depending on their deployment of constellation, or, or you know, when when their business um, you know needs them to come online, which is which is generally the case. Even like Synspective with that big deal, you know, that that spread over a couple of years as they deploy their constellation. Mm -hmm. All right, and then moving into space systems, it was mentioned that the space systems backlog as of June thirtieth is seven hundred seventy three million. How much of this backlog is related to merchant components, and what is the approximate revenue rate in Q two for the merchant components? Oh, well, that's an Adam question. <laughs> so, I would say that uh, of that backlog, uh, I would say about one hundred and fifty million of the space systems backlog is on the systems and sort of the subsystems and component side of the house. Um, and uh, I guess what was sorry what was the other question part of the question? The revenue run rate for the merchant components. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's also running about one hundred fifty million dollars a year, is roughly. So if you can think about the the, the elements of the business, and that business has been growing about twenty percent a year on a pretty consistent basis. We started that business with. Well, we actually started organically where, where we developed our first photon, but then very quickly, you know, we acquired Sinclair Interplanetary to get the reaction wheels and the star trackers and the sun sensors, and then quickly followed that up, uh, you know, with ASI to get the command and control software, and then the, the uh, PSC separation systems business, and then again with, with Solero. So those those are all businesses that have actually done really quite well under, under our ownership, grown pretty much along expectations that we'd count on when we kind of did the valuations and kind of closed those deals. So we're very happy with the merchant component part of the business. It's pretty predictable, higher margin, kind of stable part of the business. Cool. And then following Q1 earnings, it was mentioned that Rocket Lab has one customer receiving north of 2,000 reaction wheels this year. So satellites, as I understand, generally require three to four reaction wheels each. So this shows that Rocket Lab has a capacity to provide reaction wheels for roughly 500 craft per year. If we were to look at the other satellite components that Rocket Lab provides, are they in par with how many craft per year can be provided for? So in other words, within the current manufacturing footprint, how many satellites are you capable of providing for and ultimately producing? That's well, I mean, as you as you point out from a reaction wheel standpoint, um, we're we're golden. Um for for that particular uh you know this class or size of reaction wheel um and in other areas uh you know we we already have really high volume like um like solar we we have you know we, we produce many many kilowatts of of solar a year so you know solar is a is is something that you know we have a huge huge volume on and then there's kind of other components like radios that you know kind of a lower uh, you know lower volume we, we might we, we might do you know 20 or 30 of those um a year so you know there's this kind of differing different kind of volumes but i think the, the key takeaway here is that um one of the things that always frustrated me with the space industry is that the majority of those of components are supplied by kind of ma and pa shops all at subscale and frankly that's why we started to buy a bunch of component businesses is because whenever we started to build something the lead times were too long and the cost was too expensive and kind of, as Adam just pointed out, like we're, we're very happy with the, the businesses that we bought. You know, we bought them. We didn't just sit on them. We scaled them. Um, and, uh, you know, really we, we, what we're trying to do is position ourselves for our own stuff as well at, at scale. So, you know, if we want to do something uh, for ourselves at scale, then um, it's not a big lift. And then it was recently announced that Rocket Lab will receive $24 million from the CHIPS Act, then another 25 um, from the state of New Mexico. How can we expect these grants to be recognized 
would it be similar to like would they be recognized against r d for example uh well it's a mix of things so it's a combination of loans so you have, you have low interest loans you've got grants and uh you have credits tax credits and so in some cases you know and well in many cases it's their credit they're you know we actually collect or get value for the cash even though we're in a net operating loss kind of situation right now with a with a deferred tax asset on the books you know we get some real-time cash benefit from those tax credits and awards that we've been kind of negotiating with with uh, with those parties so it's really kind of across the board i think what, what you really find is for the most that what we're doing there it's the cost it's kind of enabling the cost to, to to build out a new reactor fleet and all the facility stuff around that so really what it does is it offsets the capex to a great extent. So, and from a PL perspective, you know, we're still going to have to take the, even though we got the capital in some cases for quote unquote free, we still don't escape the the accounting implications of having to depreciate those assets to, through the PL. Um, but that's a good problem to have, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then moving on to the neutron, or I guess moving back to the neutron. Earlier this year, it was mentioned that we can expect. Neutron spend of roughly $100 million throughout the rest of this year to get us to Neutron's first flight. Since then, Neutron has been pushed out, we'll call it six months, give or take. Are we still looking at that same $300 million ballpark to get us to Neutron's first launch? And following Q2, how much of an investment is remaining to get us to that first launch? Yeah. So the one thing that's been pretty remarkable about this program since we announced it back in 2021 uh, is the fact that the budget really hasn't moved and the time scale has moved out a bit. We had that six month uh, push that we experienced, uh, you know, a few, a few couple quarters ago. Uh, so we're still very much in that $300 million range. We were kind of trending to be about $25 million under budget uh, before the slip. And the result of the slip cost us about 20 million bucks because we're carrying about two quarters of just the pure kind of R&D headcount without any revenue cover and so forth. So the, the kind of explicit cost of the delay was about $20 million, but we're still within that $300 million overall program bogey. Um, to date, there's been about, you know, if you look at, you know, it gets a little bit muddy because we've had co-investment from other parties. So we had obviously a $24 million co-investment in helping develop the upper stage uh, as part of the SPEC OTA pr program with the DOD. And we've also gotten some very um, helpful assistance from Virginia Space in building out the infrastructure at Wallops. So if you kind of take across kind of what's been spent on Neutron to date, including by third parties, it's we're probably looking at a, a little over maybe $210 million of spend to date. And so if you look going forward, you know, we still, you know, again, a good chunk of that was was supported from other players. I don't think we're going to spend the first, the full $300 million to get to first launch. I think we're going to be a little under that. And then as we go past the first test launch and into production, that's when we'll kind of hit that that uh that that bogey of 300 million dollars uh and then longer term of course we're gonna have to continue continue to invest in the business like in any business right to expand capacity and and, and add more features and capabilities uh, not only to the rocket but also for the infrastructure but okay. long story short we're, we're in great shape we're on target you know costs look very good at this point and then as a follow-up to neutron's first launch what can we expect in terms of capex and r d for the neutron going forward would it still be Rough, like split roughly 50 50 between capex and r d similar to what we see currently uh no i think you're going to see a, a, a trailing off of r d spend i mean there'll still be some r d spend you know for sure but it'll step down significantly once we get past that uh, that first launch uh, and heading into the first paid launch uh but capex is going to be probably it'll, it'll shift more towards probably you know i'd say probably like 75 percent of the spend really to neutron after we get past first launch will be infrastructure and the other will be R and D. And I'll, Pete, if you does that sound about right to you as well. Yeah, no, that 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 sounds about right to me. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. It'll look it'll look, you know, fairly similar to to Electron, with the caveat, of course, that it's a new vehicle and, you know, um, we always hope your first flight goes well, but um, you know, yeah, we've spent we have have not spent a lot of money on electron R and D since we kind of got that vehicle to market. Certainly, we put some into reusability, right? So I think that's been an area that that consumed incremental R and D dollars. But you know, for the most part, uh, you know, and then we've just released some new battery capabilities on the vehicle. So those, I think, between batteries and reusability, those are really kind of the only two areas that I'm aware of that required some kind of post initial launch R and D commitment. Uh, and the rest has really been about kind of facilitating. So you know. 
adding another launch pad at, at LC1, adding the launch uh, facility at Wallops. Um, but for the most part, we kind of went on a bit of an R&D holiday uh, post introducing that product to the market. Sounds good. So we're coming up on our time. So I'll just ask one last question. Well, I'll try to squeeze a few more in or a, a few together, if you don't mind. So cool. speaking of these Electron updates, um, during the broadcast of the 51st Electron launch, it was mentioned that there was this new generation battery system on the second stage that allows for an increased payload capacity on Electron. With this upgrade in mind, what is the updated maximum payload capacity for the standard Electron? And similarly, what's the maximum payload capacity for a recovery Electron? And I'll also just squeeze in, is there still yep. recovery plans for the Electron this year? Yep. Yeah, 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 good questions. Uh, so um, so the new, new battery was really, uh, you know, uh, I would say a, a, a much more refined solution to um, the, we, we call it the beast, which uh, which was a, you know, it, it, during the, the 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 anomaly, we we basically encased all high voltage electronics in a pressure vessel, so that it was just like it was impossible to, for 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 ever, for that to ever occur, um, and uh, you know that that added uh, mass to the upper stage, so we went back and we redesigned that in a much more elegant way, and these new batteries actually had been a, a, in a in a development program, kind of ticking off to the side anyway. So it's in part to um, uh, to, to improve um, you know the the performance of the vehicle uh, from that from that beast um, modification. Uh, also, yep, we do have some more performance there with the batteries. Um, as, as as far as a payload percentage increase, uh, you know it's it's not like ten percent. Um, it's you know it's, it's single digit percentages. Um, but I'd say it's it's also early days because um, you know this is a a, a new a new battery, so we're, we're certainly not uh, not stressing it in any sense. Um, but the biggest advantage with the change in the battery was actually not on the second stage; it was on the first stage, um, because the, the the first stage batteries, um, you know, typically what they would uh, at, at the end of a reused uh, end of a first stage burn, they were not they were not able to be reused. I mean, we basically you know, turn those batteries inside out um, on the first stage. Uh, but with this new battery, um, we don't do that anymore. And um, part of the reason for the battery change was to enable us to reuse the first stage and just charge them back up and fly again. So um, so that, that that was kind of the original impetus of the, the battery program, which kind of goes back to your, 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 your other question is um, uh, about, about reusability. And um, you know, there, there is a there's a there's a vehicle core sitting in the production line right there right now that is uh, that's been reused and and is kind of working its way through the production line. But you know, one of the things that we decided to do this year is um, for two reasons is is kind of put that um, put that to the back of the importance queue. Uh, for, for for firstly, um, you know, we don't want to anytime you introduce change down on the production floor, it 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 really messes with production. So um, you know, the the team are, are are just trying to you know you know we, we've doubled production so far in this half of this year. And anybody who does any production, if you tell them that you double that, that that is that is a you know that's a that's a meaningful thing to do. So we just didn't want to introduce uh, you know another another kind of um, product and 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 kind of um, inconvenience down on the line. Uh, cadence has a much bigger effect to margin than reusability, so it's much more important that we hit cadence than particularly uh, reusability. And also the the, re the reusability team is is far better deployed right now working neutron that if you look at like uh, bang for the buck for the company um, having the, those 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 folks working neutron recovery and re reusability is is just far more important so it's just a, a series of you know priority decisions really um, but uh, you know in, in in time that that vehicle will go through whether it's this year or next year um, it, I think it's 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 hard to say. Um, but it, it, you know, it's certainly not the, not not the highest priority for the business on on Electron. Cool, Adam, Peter, thank you for your time today. I'll pass it back to Vince. Cheers. Yes, so thank you so much for speaking directly to retail investors. It's actually very few companies uh, that do that, so we really appreciate you guys, and we collectively think that you did a very good job on uh, the last presentation. It was really going over. We feel misunderstood things about uh, Rocket Lab um, and congratulations on, on this quarter. And we're really looking forward to hearing great news uh, from the company and the first Neutron launch. 
Thanks, guys. No, we really appreciate the the you know the support. And um, you know, I've noticed that my camera has me looking like I'm ascending to heaven or <laughs> some some divine <laughs> spirit. So I apologize, and I will I will replace my camera for this for this next one. I don't understand the white balance, but it you it, look it only this. happens on. It only happens on days when the stock is up 13%. Then you look like it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. Thank you, guys. See you. See you, See you next bye. time.